Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at another psalm. And as we've been calling this series, Songs for the Soul, I think this one would, would fit adequately within that description. And, and this is one of my favorite things about music, is that it can draw out and help us to identify um, various emotions and feelings that we're having that that we might not be able to to pick up on if we're just left to sit in silence on our own. And, and what we get in, in today's psalm, which is Psalm 42, is it's a bit of a sad psalm. And, and it's not complete sadness because there's hope in the end because we can hope in God, but it does fit in that category of, of, of a sad song, which if you think about it, a lot of the songs that we love are are sad songs. And why is that? I, I think it's because this is an experience that we all um, have where, where we're sad and we're, we're down and, and downcast is the language that scripture often uses. And, and that's part of the human experience and it's not enjoyable. Um, and so songs can actually help us cope with that. And, and I think this song helps us to look to God in that. So so look at Psalm 42 with me. We'll, we'll read the whole thing and then uh, just make a couple observations. But the, the title is, Why Are You Cast Down, O My Soul? And it says this, To the choir master, a mascal of the sons of Korah, As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food, day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him my salvation, and my God. My soul was cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and, and, of, and of Hermon from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, Why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. If we were to keep reading into Psalm 43, you'd actually pick up that the song continues and there's another verse and there's another chorus. And, and the thing that jumps out to me in reading this is that that refrain, that chorus, where, where the psalmist is saying, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? And this is something that, that I can identify um, with. And, and I think we all can to, to one degree or another. And the interesting thing that I picked up on in my own life is that in different seasons of life, I'll, I'll listen to different types of music. And, and I, I started using Spotify when I was a, a freshman in college, which at this point is eight or, eight or nine years ago. You know, I've been making playlists on Spotify um, since that time. And, and something I've picked up on when I go listen to old playlists is just in different seasons of life, I, I like different music kind of based on my, my experience in life. And so sometimes that's um, slower, more somber music. Sometimes that's more exciting, fun, like road trip type songs. Um, and, and I think this song fits with that, those more somber times where you can honestly say, why are you cast down, oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? And, and, and we, we can gather a number of things from the psalmist's experience by um, reading this. It It seems like this is a time when Israel was not allowed to go worship at the temple. And, and, and this is something that they're mourning and lamenting over. And they're longing to return to worship God again together. And we can relate to this um, to a large degree. Our, our, our worship is different than theirs was. 
because we're not relying on uh, a physical place to worship God in, in the way that they were. But we still, for, for this time in, in coronavirus, we've been kept from our normal routines of gathering and, and worshiping together. And I know in me that that's, that's been cause for being downcast at times, and I'm, I'm longing to know God. And, and, you, and you pile on all the different things in, in the culture and how things are um, so divided right now and, and unstable, and it seems like everyone is upset, but nobody has answers. And then you throw in all the issues of, of your own life that um, most people probably don't know about. And, and it's easy to be down. I, and I resonate with, with one of these verses in verse 7, where it says, Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. And, I, and sometimes that's the way life can feel, is, is that you're just getting pounded by by waves and I remember the first time I, I went to the ocean, I was, I was probably older than most because I grew up in, in Oklahoma, and we didn't go to the ocean a whole lot. There's not a lot of ocean in Oklahoma, so you either swim in a pool or, or in a lake, but I was probably 12 years old the first time I went um, and swam in the ocean, and I got out there, and this big eight or nine foot wave come, and I, I didn't know how to handle it, and it just smashed me, rolled me up. And, and about the time you're trying to gather yourself and, and catch your breath, here comes the next wave, and it hits you. And, and, and I'll never forget that feeling. This, you can't see, you can't hear, you can't catch your breath, and it feels like it just keeps coming. And sometimes life is like that. And what we have to ask ourselves is, how, how do we handle this, this reality about life as Christians? Um, being a Christian doesn't mean that that's not going to happen to you. The breakers and the waves are still going to come. The difficult times are still going to come. The, the moments where your emotions are, are just crying out, why are you cast down, oh my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? That's going to come. And, and, and what we learn from this psalm is that it's, it's a healthy thing to cry out to God with these feelings. And I, and I think that's one thing we can gather from this is that we need to call out to God and even complain to God. You, you see in verse 9, he says, I say to God, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go on in mourning? And, and, and he's making these complaints to God. And I think that's something we can do. But the good thing for us as, as Christians or as people who know the Bible is that we know that it doesn't end with complaint for us. And, and, and we need to look to where this psalm ends and where the chorus ends every time. And it's hope. Hope in God. For I shall again praise him. My salvation and my God. And this is something that our world does not have that we do have. And if you look around in, in our current cultural moment, you'll recognize this, that the, the average person in our world does not have hope. But this is, this is something we do have. And, and this, this changes the whole dynamic. Yes, our world is broken. And yes, we are, are broken people. We're, we're fallen sinners. But we can have hope because we know that even in the midst of this brokenness, even in the midst of our own personal sadness and, and, and depression, we know that God is good. And we know that He loves us. And we know that He sent His Son for us. And, and Jesus is well acquainted with this type of feeling. As you, you can recall Him crying out from the, from the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so we have this perfect high priest Jesus who is able to sympathize with us and we call on him and and, and in these moments of grief we, we do our best to get our eyes up and look to him and and ultimately we are setting our hope that he will come again and that he will set all things right and that when he does there will be no more tears no more pain no more cast down souls because he will make all things good and so I long for that day, and I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, another thing that's helpful to me is listening to songs that are inspired by um, the Psalms and even by this. So I, I've linked three different Psalms down in, in the description, and they're all songs by different artists, um, but, but they're inspired from this Psalm, and I think that might be helpful to you as well.